three. Hello and welcome to another edition of the C Squared Podcast. This is your host, Curtis, and my co-host, Aliyah. We are here again with Mr. Pedro from the a and Reacts YouTube channel. He is back for the third, fourth, fifth, I don't even fucking know how many times he's been here, but he's been here a lot. Um, and he's here again to grace us with his wisdom, his knowledge uh, about bands, music, and all that sort of stuff. And today we are going to be talking about at a topic that is near and dear to all of our hearts, which is band mistakes. So to start us off, thank you, Pedro, for being with us. And with that, Aliyah is going to leave with the very first question. Um, we can just dive right into it. Pedro, what, what are some of the biggest mistakes that you see bands making publicly uh, these days? I, I really feel that bands, uh, you know, it really depends. You're asking my personal opinion as far as mistakes, because if you ask yeah. the band, obviously for them it's not a mistake. Otherwise, they wouldn't they wouldn't do it. Uh, I think we live very contestant times where everybody has a very strong opinion about something, um, and everybody wants to voice their opinion about whatever that something is. Uh, and I feel like sometimes bands should take a step back. Um, maybe the individual of the band should within the band should take a step back. And in, I'm not saying that bands or individuals cannot have their own opinion about whatever it is, right or wrong, depending on the point of view. That's all debatable, right? I just feel like if you're going to voice your opinions about whatever the topic is, you know, greenhouse and, you know, uh, emissions, uh, uh, I don't know, COVID, whatever the case might be, uh, I would, my, my personal view is you should do that on your own personal page with your own personal statement behind it and not necessarily put the band's name in the forefront, specifically if the band hasn't been known in the past to have uh, a political agenda, quote unquote. I mean, if you're talking about Rage Against the Machine, they can do whatever they want because they've always been doing it. So it's not like yeah. out of character, right? But if a band that, that you know, doesn't have necessarily that in their back pocket as something that they've done in the past, I really feel more comfortable and I think would be better off for the band uh, for the individuals within the band to voice their own personal opinions, but not do it under the banner of the band itself. Because you're going to be, it's polarizing. We're living in a polarizing world and you're, you're, you're going to divide your fan base. And, and, I don't, and I think you have to look at the band at the end of the day as a business because that's what it is. You're in the business of making music. You're in the business of selling music. You're in the business of selling your products, selling your t-shirts, selling all of that stuff. And I, and I feel that you have to distance yourself, the individual from the band and keep those two worlds as separated as possible. And not, and not everything out there that requires you to have an opinion about it. You know what I mean? Or at least making it public. I have a lot of opinions about a lot of things. I don't make them public. It's just, I, I just feel like nothing, there is nothing to be gained from it. Because the people who support your opinion uh, support your music and were supporting your music before. But the people who don't support your opinion are going to walk away from your music. So th there's nothing positive to be gained. If anything, there's only negatives to be achieved. So I, I think that right now in the political and social world that we live in, I think that's perhaps the band's biggest mistake. Sometimes it's better not to say anything mm. and, and let just, you know, the water flow under the bridge, if you will. I see, Curtis. I, I, I agree um, 100% on everything that you're saying. And I, I probably said this like a zillion times in the past myself. Um, so now just to clarify, now you're not talking about politically oriented bands you're talking about a band like i don't know for example metallica suddenly getting on the political end of the metallica is a, is a perfect example uh, and i'll throw this this at you you know don't tread on me they had that song on the yeah. black album then yeah. on january 6 you had people going into uh in, into the in the u.s doing what they did on january 6 having flags that said don't tread on me with a with a snake on it that, that right. flag is not a Metallica flag. That flag existed way before Metallica ever did that song. Mm -hmm. I also don't feel like Metallica owes anybody an apology if somebody uh, uses a term and uses something uh, that was around even before Metallica made the song. And when Metallica made the song, the context in which the song was made is completely different from the context in which we live today. So yeah. when, when that happens and I see people up in arms like Metallica should apologize or they should come out and say that, you know, they disavow the actions. What, what does Metallica have to do with anything? They made a song in the 1990s. We're in yeah. 2022. Like put things in perspective here. When that song was made, the social context was completely different. They have nothing to say. They have nothing to apologize. 
But yes, a band like Metallica, I mean, if they came out of nowhere and said, you know, we, we are here to support the Turtles in the Galapagos or whatever, I would feel like, well, you know, it's a nice cause, but it's a little bit out of character. You know, I would rather, I would feel more comfortable if they did it as individuals, you know what I mean? But not under the umbrella of, of the band. That's all. Yeah, it's kind of like, an... go ahead, Liv. Well, I have a uh, continuing thought on that. Um, what do you think then of bands who maybe do charity concerts or songs dedicated to certain causes? They might be political, they might be social causes. I mean, by doing that in a way, they're making a statement of support for certain things. It, it's, mm. it's, once again, I, I think you have to, as a band, I think you have to understand uh, when you're getting to those waters, you're going to get wet. And the question always comes down to how wet are you willing to become, right? Yeah. If, if you're willing to, uh, if the cause is that near and dear to you, that are you willing to alienate a fan base because of it or alienate some people because of it or create bad press because of it, then, you know, more power to you. Then maybe it's not a mistake. Uh, I, I feel like you always have to be careful uh, in which basket you're putting your eggs in. Just, just really do your due diligence. Be careful what you're associating yourself with. Be careful. Uh, it's no different than sponsorships, right? Be careful who, who, who product are you backing? Uh, is this a legit company? Like, I mean, I, I just feel like these days people are, because of social media, uh, you know, before maybe PR companies would kind of filter these requests for bands to participate in concerts or, or, in, or in promotions or whatever the case might be. But now because of social media, things happen a lot more directly and, and there's almost no filter there. And I really feel like bands have to be a little bit concerned about where they're putting their baskets, uh, I mean, their eggs in which basket they're going in. Uh, I don't have anything against, uh, against bands that participate in a free Tibet I mean, who's not pro free Tibet? You know what I mean? Like, to yeah. me, that's not a controversial topic. You know, what I mean? it's like, you know, um, the same way if a band participated in a pro -abor abortion concert, you know, uh, there's certain topics that I don't really feel like are controversial. I'm sure they are to some people, but I just don't really feel like they are. So I, I guess it really comes down to what topic and, and where and who you were associating yourself with. Uh, when you had the, 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 back in the 90s when singers got together to, to create a song to promote uh, uh, raising money for children in Africa and for the hunger. And I, those are not like, you know, topics that really create the huge amount of riffraff between, between fashions. I mean, everybody could get on, on board with people in Africa were hungry and we need to raise funds. Now, did it reach its goal? Now, that's a completely different discussion. That's a completely mm -hmm. different topic. So <clears throat> I, I really feel like you just need to take a little bit of a step back and, and peel all the layers from what it is that you're getting yourself associated with. Because you never know under one of those layers if there's something that you really don't like. And then down the road, you have to issue an apology that while we weren't aware of that and blah, 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 blah. Then it just becomes wishy-washy. I, I would almost rather people just not participate at all. Just like, you know what? It, it, I don't want to get involved with anything. You yes. know, maybe donate money because that's the other thing. When you're doing something good for a good cause, you don't have to let the world know that you've done it. You can just yeah. do it. Yeah. You know, Metallica has a lot of money. If they want to donate money to a cause, they don't have to make it public. They can just donate the money. Like yeah. this idea, I, I was watching Superstore the other day and, the, and they asking a guy to donate money for, for children's toys. And he goes, well, but I already donated outside. If I donate here, I can post two pictures on Instagram about two donations. So it became about him showcasing that he had donated, not about the donation itself. And I feel like we're living a little bit in that world that people are always looking for something to pat themselves on the back or have other people pat them on the back. And that's why they're doing it. They're not really doing it because they believe in the cause. They were doing it because of the publicity that could come from that action. And that's wrong anyways. And that's I, a really good point because I do feel like sometimes bands do those charity things just to get more attention for their band. Yeah. Um, sorry, so, Curtis, I cut you off. No worries. I was just going to say that that's part of the reason why, uh, like with C squared and even with Dewar PR, when I had Dewar PR, what I was, I, I will never get involved with any cause. Because I don't care what the hell they are. It could be the Starving Children in Africa Fund. I, I don't care. I mean, if a band comes to us and they say when they want a press release for X thing, cause, not doing it. Just will we'll not touch it with a 10 foot pole. I don't care what it is because of the fact, like you said, there could be something that you don't know about that's associated with or whatever. 
I have no fucking clue. I don't have time to research all these things. So if someone says to me, you know, um, I, I got a cause, uh, we're raising money for X thing. I don't care what it is. I just go, we're not touching it. I, I, I just don't care. It could be like the, like the cleanest charity in the world. I don't fucking care. Just not touching it with a 10 foot pole just to be on the safe side. Because also, um, I don't know if Pedro's aware of where this or Aaliyah, uh, there was also a band uh, two or three years ago that said that they were raising money for a specific cause and it ended up being it was all the money went into their own pocket. I don't know if you guys are aware of that and I'm not going to say heard about something along those lines. I can't remember the name of the band, I, I, but I remember, late- I remember reading something on Loudwire or one of the, yeah. those publications about something along those lines. Yeah. So like, that's the other side of the coin too, is like, if I'm sending out a press release on something and they're saying all the funds are going to, you know, poor children, uh, to get, get them toys, and then later you find out like maybe 0.005% of the money went to you know the, the charity, and all the rest went to the band. I don't want to be associated with that, you know. Like, I, I have no fucking clue what the hell is going on with it. So, like, I agree with you on that. Like, just I will not associate us with anything, uh, privately as an individual. If I decide to donate money, that's totally different. Totally different. If I yeah. post it on. No problem. Same thing with like if Aaliyah does that, Corey does that, guy does it, Holly does it. I don't fucking care. I just don't want it at C squared. And I think you're right that people need to be able to differentiate between the individual versus the company, right? Um, that was my little spiel on that. Now let's get back into something else here. So now art from the artist type thing. So this is this kind of goes into that here. So do you think that there's a line that needs to be drawn? between separating art from the artist or not? I think it comes down to the artist. Fair. If the artist wants the line to be separated, then they have to do everything in their power to separate it. If yep. they don't want that line to be there at all and they want the waters to be murky, then it's up to them. But once again, I think you have to be conscious of what comes with it. And I don't yep. think you can claim foul play down the road when things don't go your way because you totally got in bed with it early on in the process you know, yep. so it, it, to me, it's like you have to man up from the beginning. Uh, and, and I hate to use that expression, but I feel like you have to take the, the, the consequences that comes with your actions. If, if you as a band take a stand as a band, then all the negative press that comes with it comes with it. And then you can say down the road that, oh, you know, like uh, people are trying to cancel us. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't work that way. You can't have your cake and eat it too. So it really comes down, it comes down to the band themselves and how far they're willing, they're willing to go. Uh, I, I feel like sometimes the individual thought process of some key members within the band that have higher stakes within the band or that control the interests of the band take over versus the actual other people within the band. Because you're not going to tell me that certain posts made by a band who are actually made by somebody who runs the, the page of the band, who sometimes either could be a PR person or most likely if the things are a little bit off skewed is one of the high end members that runs the band. Are you going to tell me that he ran it by every single person before he made that post? No, he didn't. And I don't think that's fair. And if I was in the band, I would be pissed off that you're taking a stand that impacts me as an individual, because now you're not representing yourself. You're representing all of us. Um, so, but then also then comes down to money. Right, yeah. like, do I really want to ruffle that feather if I'm if I have a cushy job and I'm making good money doing this gig and that? And at the end of the day, what I find it funny is that people complain about everything, but it always comes down to money. That's mm-hmm. always come, comes down to, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I, I see people complaining about certain things, but they're complaining because they're coming from a position where the status quo doesn't meet their own personal interests. It's not like they want to make life better for you or me or make the world better in general. They can give two shits about if you're starving or not. They care about money that's not coming into their pocket. So when they come out and they say, oh, you know, we stand for freedom or this. Well, where were you when, when, for example, the natives were blocking the pipeline because it was going through their lens? You had no you had no public statement about that at all, at all. I mean, if you're going to have a social position on something, you better have a social position on everything, because otherwise you're only having a social position on something that's affecting your bottom dollar. And then you're losing all credibility because now it's not about fighting for freedom. It's about fighting for your bank account. And that's how it comes across. I'm sorry, but that is how it comes across because, you know, you're picking and choosing the events that have a financial impact on your well-being. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? So uh, it just dilutes the whole thing. And I lose respect for the band. I lose respect for the individuals. And it's really hard for me 
to support a band who I morally don't agree with. It, it doesn't even come down to the, to the subject matter anymore. It comes to a moral standpoint. Because me and you could disagree politically, religiously, whatever. I don't stop being your friend and, and you don't stop being mine. We still can have mm -hmm. an open discussion. We can agree to disagree. But the moment that I lose respect for you morally in terms of where you stand, that's when everything is, for me, it's, 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 a, it's a done deal. I, I can't come back from that. So let me ask you this. So here, here's a tough one that nobody ever really seems to answer. I'm going to put you on the spot with this. I don't know if you're a fan of this band or not, but um, one person um, that no everybody seems to turn a blind eye to uh, that is considered like a god who is a very questionable moral character and has had, you know, like many underage groupies and all the rest of it, that type of stuff. Jimmy Page. So what about the guys from the 70s? You got like all those type of guys, you know, they were doing the stuff. How, like you know what i'm saying because i mean yeah, like yeah. i because i because I, 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 cause that's because i kind of go like uh, like a lot of people will say that you know like band member does this it's immoral and they're right it is 100 percent. but then you got guys like i said jimmy page i i don't know what to say on that you know i feel like people uh are in love with the music and they're in love yeah. with the artist so they're yeah. no different than a, an athlete. So they're willing to turn a blind eye when those people do something that's more morally questionable or that's even, you know, unacceptable. Never mind questionable, unacceptable. Because that's their hero. And, and if you admit that your hero has done something wrong, intrinsically, you are admitting that you've done something wrong. Because yeah. that's what's pushing your own very character, right? So if, if, if I love a guy or a band and, and I've never been a huge Jimmy Page fan, so I feel very free to say that, you know, like, uh, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of his because of, of the social aspect of his personal behavior. I can't really turn a blind eye to it. I don't care how juicy his riffs are. Like, there's just certain, there's just certain lines that I'm not willing, I, I don't feel comfortable. That That's just me personally, right? But sure. I, I, I just see it from this perspective. If, if, and I had this conversation with my son many times, I have band tattoos. Right. Yeah. So what about if you discover that the band has done something, how are you going to see it? It's a really it's a conundrum because you look at this band that you love, that you've loved for many years. And then you find out that, you know, the main guy or one of them. I mean, if it's a guy that they hired to do a couple of riffs on an album here and there, that's a completely different story. But but if it's a main character within a band, like uh, uh, let's let's use a, a specific band. Let's let, let's look at a bath, for example, if he's mm -hmm. done something. That, that's him. It's not like one of the people he hired to be on the album, right? So if you're a huge fan of his and you find out he's done something questionable, how, how do you come to grips with that? It's really difficult because yep. it, you also have to come to grips with yourself. And I find that a lot of people, in order to protect their own selves, uh, find excuses for that person's behavior. It, you know, it's it, because you've you almost been living your whole life vicariously through the lives of these people that you idolize and it's really hard to bring that idol off of that pedestal i really feel so and yep. maybe that's the reason why growing up i really never had idols my idol was my dad that's it because you know like he's the only person that i ever idealized in terms of what i wanted to be as a man and as a person because i know people are flawed and while i, I was a fan of michael jordan as a basketball player i'm not a fan of michael jordan as a man you know mm -hmm. what i mean like but I can still appreciate his dunks, you know, you know, so I, I, I think you have to be able to disconnect from one another. But when you're talking about music and when you're talking about artists with people who are hardcore fans, I mean, hardcore fans, they're willing to turn a blind eye to a lot of uh, unsettling behavior that if it was done by somebody else, they wouldn't. And, and that yeah. says more about you as an individual than the artists themselves. That's my take on it. I um, so I would like to interject a bit because how do you balance that with situations like what happened recently with um, a band I know that you love, Sabaton, one of their ex-members was um, outed as uh, having child pornography, a very old, old, long ago member. Uh, in a way, and um, I, I feel like with Sabaton, people are trying to look for reasons to hate them because they sing about war and stuff, but um, and every song I don't sounds know. The same. Hmm? And every song sounds the same. That's another thing. Yeah, 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 true, true, true. But uh, <laughs> I, know Sabaton. I know the guys in the band, they're friends of mine. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm not dissing. I'm just, I'm just putting out there with what everybody else says. I, I think on, on the Sabaton, you can bring in Man of War as well because they had a member of the band that was yep. uh, that was charged with uh, with uh, child pornography. Uh, to a certain extent, you can throw in Cannibal Corpse into that picture as well because that says happening yep. as well. Uh, yep. But then you can you can look at those three bands and you can put them all in one basket. And then I'll give you another one that you can put in a different basket. You can put Ice Earth with John Schaefer in a different basket. Mm. The reason why I differentiate these bands is very simple. With John Schaefer and Ice Earth, he is Ice Earth. There's no other. It, it, that's his band. He is Ice. Without him, there's no Ice Earth. All right. When you look at Sabaton, when you look at Cannibal Corpse, when you, when you look at Men of War, you're talking about a, a fringe member who's not the core member of the band. If you look at Sabaton, you're looking at, at, at Parr and you're looking at Joaquin Brodom. That is Sabaton. The other guys have moved. They've had different drummers. They have different guitar players. But those two guys are Sabaton. If this had happened with one of them, the conversation would be a lot different. Right. right? And, and I'm not trying to minimize what the guy did. That's not what I'm saying here. I'm just saying that as a band, you're made up of individuals. And I don't think you can uh, I don't think you can, uh, if the band is not aware that this was going on, do you know what I mean? Like if they don't know that this was happening, it's a different story. I don't think you can throw the band under the bus because it's made up of a group of individuals. That would be like, if your son committed a crime, you go to jail as well, just because you're in the same household. It's just not the way life is, right? Nope. But if it had happened to one of the key members, one of the guys that started the band, one of the guys that's been there from the beginning, then it's a completely different discussion. And then I think you have to throw the band under the bus because, you know, they are the band. They are the image of who that band is. So I think you have to look at these worlds from those two uh, separate perspectives. I'll throw another one into the conversation. Ailstorm and Gloryhammer. I'm sure you guys know about all the stuff from WhatsApp conversations, the racism, the, the misogyny, all of that stuff. Yep. That is different because those are band members having a private conversation. You know what I mean? So it's not like uh, it's not like you can escape that and say, well, it was this guy. No, these are the key members of the band having that discussion. And you can tell people to forgive them because they tour in the UK and the places were sold out. Now, have they lost fans because of it? I'm sure they have. But mm -hmm. once you know who they are and, and once you've listened to their music and you've seen their shows and, and you've read the lyrics, I mean, are you really shocked of some of these conversations were happening private i personally wasn't and and and, and to me it, it comes down to how comfortable are you with those conversations uh you know what i'm saying so it, it comes down to a personal thing I, I think with with sabaton to go back to your original point i don't have an issue with the band because once again was i consider a fringe member who was even no longer with the band at this point in time uh the band distanced themselves from that and it was not the core guys do you feel like there's a cultural shift going on to a point where in the future that will tear down a band? Or do you think that people are it has, in general rational enough to... No, I think, it, I mean, if you look at a band like Lotus Eater, I don't know if you guys know about Lotus Eater. They broke up before they released their debut album. Their debut album was scheduled to be released last year. I can't remember under what label. Um, and they broke up before. Okay, so they had a singer that they kicked out of the band because he was accused in charge. Uh, of rape so they kicked out the singer out of the band then they brought another singer into the band and they were preparing the release of the debut album and then uh, two weeks before it comes out that that singer is also being allegedly involved in a rape allegation Jesus. it turns out that the other members of the band were also aware that that member was having that sort of behavior so how can you come back from that so they just broke up and the album never saw the, the, the light. Well, not, not true. I have the album, but, uh, you know, the album never saw the light of day because I received the album for a review. I'm glad I didn't <laughs> review it because I found out about <laughs> this. But um, so, yeah, it could destroy a band, but it comes down to how involved are everybody in the band with the behavior of that one person. Right. Like, I, I think we have to separate the, the individuals from the group, uh, mm -hmm. depending on how the group reacts to the actions of the individuals. Do you know what I'm saying? Like. So it, it really comes down to that. Well, at the same token, um, and I do agree with what you're saying, but I mean, like with me, I, I, I generally do agree with you, but then at the same time, like I don't mind listening to Burzum, for example, but I do not agree in any way, shape or form with that individual and he's an idiot, like completely, but I, I'll listen to his albums. I, listen, I still listen to Ice Earth and I don't agree with what John Schiffer did. But no, but would I go and buy 
uh, one of his new albums? I'm going to say no. Would yeah. you see me wearing a nicer T-shirt? No. Will yeah. I stop listening to the music that he's released in the past? No. So yeah. I, I think it all comes down to what are you comfortable as an individual? And I think yeah. you have to look at at listen to some like listen to the music that you already acquired for example before the actions took place and then supporting the band after the actions are two separate things and also right. comes down to your own personal what do you make public i mean if you're posting on on twitter every day that burzum rocks man this this oh, album, I'm not yeah oh, I'm like, not i mean like then it's no. kind of hard for you to distance no. yourself from the the individual no. do you see what i'm saying right. so, no. I, I think it all comes down to wh where how you walk those fine lines. Yeah. We all have guilty pleasures. We all yeah. have things that we're not totally uh, okay with. Like my son and I, we had this conversation about Glory Hammer and, and we were huge friends of Glory Hammer and Ill Storm. I know a lot of the guys in both bands. And he's like, you know what? Whatever, I'm still gonna listen to their music. And he's like, okay, that's, man, that's your prerogative. I'm not, I'm not judging you. Uh, it, yeah. It's just that you have to make those decisions in terms of what, what feels well with your with your conscious in terms of what feels well with within yourself if you yeah. know deep inside that it, it doesn't feel cozy maybe you shouldn't be doing it you know yeah it's an individual choice though at the same time like you're right i mean it's just there's so many different examples we can go over like uh vince neal is another good one murder well not murder but kill the guy driving drunk you know people still love him all the rest of it um but where are we going with this alia so um keep the topic on 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 topic um well i don't i don't know if we need to uh, beat a dead horse on this one really but i mean i do think that for example the stuff with that happened with glory hammer that those types of conversations aren't uncommon and i would bet that a lot of bands you don't know are having those conversations because tour culture is different from my understanding, than normal day-to-day -day culture. You know, and uh, I like that it's been being exposed because maybe it'll change now. Uh, my son said the same thing you said. He goes, if we took 10 bands, private WhatsApp messages, nine out of two of those 10 bands would have something, uh, you know, that was from At least misogynist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At, at the very minimum, at the very minimum. But yeah. It was like we just got a glimpse into a world that we weren't supposed to have a glimpse in and at the same time it's a little bit unfair because that's a private conversation how, how many of us in our own private homes have said something that we would never say in public does that make us bad people no we're all human right <laughs> it's just that today with social media people take a picture of you at your worst moment and that is what stays that's what's magnetized and that's what's blown up you know what I mean? So it's, it's so you have to be very careful with what you put out there as far as what you want your image to be. Th that's yeah. all. So yeah. it's interesting you have that 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 point because my son, mm. same, he said exactly the same thing. <laughs> yeah, we've actually had it. Well, not we, we as in me, like someone sent C squared some private messages of a band that we could potentially be working with that had said some questionable stuff and I, my, my first attitude was thank you for sending it to me but that's a private conversation I don't really want to be reading this right so I, I know what you guys are both it, it is a hard judgment call to make though at the same time right oh, I so, have a question for for Aaliyah here so since she's the only one in an actual band mm. knowing, knowing something like this about a band would you still go on tour with them if if the opportunity presented itself I'm not uh, saying about Glory Hammer and, and Aelstrom. I'm hypothetically a band out there. Something came out misogynistic about women, whatever. You have there's there's mm -hmm. two ladies in your band. Would you guys would you still be comfortable going on tour? I wouldn't I wouldn't say I wouldn't be hundred percent comfortable, but I might do it depending. Um I would definitely be extra cautious. Um and I might not um what's the word? Socialize so much. Yeah. You know, I'm looking at it as a, a business opportunity exclusively. I, I don't know um, for sure. But yeah, that's my intuitive answer, I would say. So but I don't know, I, maybe it would come down to it. It would depend on what they said, you know. 
Well, I, I didn't see the ale story. I heard about the ale story thing, but I, I didn't see the actual thing. So it was a bunch of mis- mis- misogynist type stuff that they said. Is that right? I, they I, were I, just basically talking about banging chicks on tour, but they well, were pretty. They were pretty racist about it as well. Okay. But, well, I, mean, I mean, I know groupie culture is a thing, and also I know that. Well, I hope that. I'm not going to say that. Never mind. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just know that groupie culture is a thing. It's got a historical basis. And so, you know, you're trying to navigate that into a new world that maybe that never should have been a thing, but it definitely has been a thing. So, so people if, have different expectations. and So if it was something like that, you, you would be fine put potentially as a business decision, but just not with the individuals is what you're saying. Right. Maybe. Okay. Just, just maybe. I guess, it, I mean, it depends on the circumstance, obviously, yeah. right? Yeah, but I, I, think it also, I think it also comes down to what position the band, like let's say in this case, what position publicly your band would have had on similar attitudes from other bands. Because then if, if, if a band comes out publicly and denounces another band for that behavior, and then two months later goes on tour with another band who's had similar behavior, I, I mean, that, that actually looks worse on you than it does on the bands who are having the behavior because... Now you're just flip-flopping. I mean, if it was bad yesterday, why is it okay today? Just because you're making money today off of it? Then it, it makes you almost guilty by association at that point. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sure it's happened, but I can't think of an example. But I, I am pretty sure that that's what you're saying has happened with the oh, touring. I'm sure. I'm sure. But, um, okay, so we got about uh, 10 minutes left, guys. So we're going we're to make this count here. So, uh, Pedro, here's the here, here's next next part of it so other than what we discussed for band mistakes um like the controversial aspect of well, actually no let's take up one more part of the controversial thing so let's say um band member x because i know a band or, or i i know of a band rather uh who's who has a member that will make very controversial posts on their own personal private page do you do you think that should affect people um with listening to the band if, if they don't agree with the comments or again do you think it's kind of like doesn't matter i think it will and okay. i don't think there's a right or wrong right once okay. again like, uh, i think it comes down to you as an individual um you know for me personally uh, i'm more willing to separate the individuals from the band if the comments are being made by the individual and not made by the band's page yeah. So, uh, because if you're segregating those two worlds yourself, then yeah. I'm I'm able to turn a blind eye to one versus the other because you're you're at least putting an effort into separating your personal views from the views that that the band has. Um, but that's not to say that that you know uh, other people feel differently about it. Once again, it really comes down to how strongly you feel about about whatever the topic is, about the subject. My point here is that there is no right or wrong. It really, there isn't. You know what I mean? Like it all comes down to each person's individual uh, compass. Uh, What I I find interesting is that a band that takes a stand either on their individual, uh, the the member's individual page or as a band, when they receive backlash from it, they, they, they somehow act surprised. And, and, you know, they act like, you know, like people are, are trying to do something violent to them. They're you're trying to take away my livelihood. You're trying to, no, you know, the same yeah. way you have the right to have an opinion, the other people have the same right to have their opinion about your opinion. And the moment yeah. you make your opinion public, you know, you're putting yourself out there to receive public criticism based on that opinion. I mean, you, you, I, I had an exchange with, with a musician on Twitter where he was basically telling me that I shouldn't have an opinion about his opinion. Okay, but you posted your opinion publicly. The moment you post your opinion publicly, I have all the right to have an opinion about your opinion. That's what Twitter is all about. If you don't want me to publicly shame your opinion, then don't make your opinion public, especially on Twitter. I mean, I'm, we're not talking about a press release. We're not talking about, you know what I mean? Like, uh, we're, we're talking about Twitter here. So, you know, I, I think what, what I see from a lot of these bands is that they want to dish out, but then they're, they're, they don't want to get it on the, on the way back when it's, when it's negative, when it doesn't suit their agenda. And, and it's almost like the, the, the kid who, who takes their ball home because people don't want to play with them. It, yeah. it, acts, it, it, to me, feels a little bit childish from that perspective. And, and I think a, a lot of these bands uh, should manage themselves better all around. I mean, these mistakes, these social stuff, 
but even in, in terms of like album releases, promotion, you know, like don't leave things for the last minute to promote something, create a promotion path uh, a year before. The moment you start working on the record, start working on the promotion path that you want that record to have ahead of time. You know, cross all, treat your business like a business. Agreed. Treat your business uh, like a, a mom and pop shop. You're going to be treated like a mom and pop shop. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with being a mom and pop shop, but I'm just saying, you know, you, you can't expect the, the service at the Hilton if you're at a Motel 8. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's just the, the two don't go together. So I, I see a lot of bands these days doing this. And I think the issue is social media. The, the veil has been removed. There's no veil anymore. There's no you wondering about, man, you know, I love Angus Young. I wonder how he is in person. You know what I mean? That, that kind of thing that we grew up with as, as music fans back in the day before social media, where we can only guess how our favorite artists would be in person, that no longer exists. You can see them having breakfast with their kids. You can see them farting, whatever. So that veil has been removed due to social media. And I think a lot of these people uh, don't know to, how to navigate these social media waters. They don't understand the repercussions of everything that you say and everything that you do and the negative impact that could have on your business. And then when things go south, you start to blame cancel culture or whoever or whatever. No, take ownership for what you said and what you did and think twice before you say it or do it. You know, well, I, I see my son all the time. In your private chats with your friends, don't say something that one day can come back to haunt you. Be very careful. You never know. One day you're running for office and somebody will bring up a text from when you were a kid and, yeah. and it goes sideways. Don't, yeah. don't put it in writing. Right. Say it, say it, but don't put things in writing. You have to be super careful. And the other thing too that I want to point out as well with bands um, with that you're saying with the social media, like if you know the statement's going to be controversial, don't even bother. Like if you already know, then don't even bother. Like just keep the, like you can have the opinion. But like, for example, like, I don't know, like if, if you're pro or con vaccine, for example, and, and you don't want to get a backlash on it either way, then just don't publicly tweet about it as your band. I, I, I see, I have friends and big bands yeah. who are anti-vax. I, yeah. I'm personally vaccinated and, I, and, and I, they're okay to have their opinion, but they don't Same. post it as the band. They post it yeah. under their own personal page. I'm okay exactly. with that. I'm, I'm totally cool with that. You know, I'm totally cool with that. I, I, I think that's a better way. Now, there's still going to be people who are going to associate the two because it's very hard to, to break one from the other. Uh, yeah. but, you know, but, if, but if that is something that is really important to you and you want to get your voice out there, then, you know, do it. You know, it's... On personal, page. on personal pages only, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because otherwise you're... You're really hurting the other people in the band with you. Yeah. And I think at some point in time, don't be selfish. Think of the others that are in the band with you, that don't have the same voice, that don't have the same clout, but at the same time have bills to pay and are part of the product that you're putting out there. I think it's super selfish. If I was the member of a band and I'm the leader of that band, for ex never mind the band, as a &P reacts, it would be super selfish of me to post something on behalf of AMP Reacts without consulting with my son first. I would never do that. Never. It's the two of us. I would never do that. And I think it's selfish of these bands, of these band members who hijack their own band for their own agenda without consulting with the band members before doing so. You know, it's just, it's in my opinion, is is morally wrong and deplorable what they're doing. Just with that I, I would do the same thing with c squared like i mean even even though i am the owner of the company i would not post anything remotely controversial or that i even thought was remotely controversial just yeah. because of the, that i don't want these other guys getting the backlash for it because it's not not them same thing like if they posted like valia posted something on her personal page fine but if she's posting it on the c squared page and eh, you know probably not a good yeah. idea i will um, say i don't really post I've tried to avoid posting anything controversial, religious, political, anything basically, because um, I had my time of arguing with people online when I was like 14 and I'm over it. You can't convince anyone of anything online. No, because people's ideas are already made up. So yeah. you're really pissing at the wind at that point. I mean, exactly. if you're, you're emptying your bladder, but at the end of the day, you end up with a piss all over yourself. 
So mm -hmm. <laughs> I think you have to, I took that approach myself personally. I only use social media to post jokes, you know, yeah. things like that, or, or this, the content that we're creating. Because yeah. I, I don't feel like uh, every time that I see something on TV or every time that I experience something in my life that I disagree with, I don't feel the need to have to share that with the 5,000 people that follow me on Facebook or with the people that follow us on YouTube or the people who follow us on Instagram. No, like that's my own, like, you know, keep something for yourself too. Like, like just, you know, yeah. have a filter. You know what I mean? Like not everything that comes into that noggin of yours needs to make it all the way out to your mouth. Just, damn it, put the phone away. You know? Oh my God, yes. I that's agree. why a lot of these bands that have PR companies, the PR companies manage their Facebook pages and, and that kind of stuff because they know what to post and what not to post because they could have, I mean, look at it. I'll give you a band here, uh, Amorphous. When was the last time Amorphous posted anything remotely controversial? Never. So, yeah. you, don't even know, you don't know what the band members feel about this or that or, no. They talk about their music, they talk about their tours, they talk about their songs, about their shows, and that's it. And to be yeah. honest with you, that's all I really want. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. if I want advice on my RSPs, I contact a banker. I don't go to my favorite uh, musician to see what he thinks about Bitcoin. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, people are looking for answers in the, all the wrong places. You know, like... <laughs> You know, if I need an oil change, I go to Mr. Lou. I don't come to Aaliyah's house and say, you know, what do you think about the oil change? You know what I mean? Like, like people, just because their music <laughs> is great doesn't mean that their opinions are the same. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they're just as dumb as you are. So, yeah. you know, anyways, I could go on a rant and I think I just did. Yeah. Oh, well, this whole episode has been a bit of a rant, but it's a good yeah. one. <laughs> you have to wrap up. So, Aaliyah, you want to... Uh give us a uh, send-off here or maybe give some final words and a send-off um the only final words i have is listen take <clears throat> heed of what you've heard in this episode and until next time make like a bull and throw those horns up <laughs>